One of the great features of digital books is hyperlinking, and this feature is supported by the iBooks platform. iBooks lets you hyperlink both within the book and outside the book. You can make links to text or figures within the book, and you can link to web pages or email addresses outside of the book. So I'm going to show you these one at a time. So first, I've got this word, Google, and I want to link that to Google's actual website. So you select the text, go to the Inspector button, open it, and choose the Link Inspector palette. And make sure you're in the Hyperlink section. Click Enable as a Hyperlink. And then in the Link to drop-down, change it from Figure, which is the default, to Web Page. And then all you have to do is enter the URL, google.com, click Enter. So now the appearance has changed, and you can change the appearance of a hyperlink uh, because it's a character style. This is the character style and paragraph style drawer right here on the side. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but you can refer to the paragraph style video to see how to change these styles. It's quite easy. The point is you're not stuck with the way that this looks. This is just how it's set up in my template. And if you hold your mouse over it, you see a hand, and if you click on it, it opens up your uh, default web browser and brings you to that website. And in the iPad, it'll do the same thing for the reader. It'll switch them over from the iBooks reader into uh, mobile Safari and bring up the website. So I'm going to close this and go back to iBooks Author. And we're basically going to do the exact same thing with an email address. So select the text, click the inspector. We're in the link inspector already. Click Enable as a hyperlink. In the link to drop down, I'm going to click email address, and here we go. So now the option is the email address itself and a subject. And click enter, done. Now we hold the mouse over, we see that it's uh, going to send us to uh, an email rather than a website. Click it, and it'll try to open up your mail reader. So I'm just going to close that, we don't need to do that right now. Now we'll do a figure. So the figure means uh, a figure within the book. So those are your two options, website and email address for outside of the book. Now we're going to get to the options inside of the book. So if you click figure, go to the inspector palette, enable as a hyperlink, and we're already on figure because that's the default. Now you can choose where in the book you want it to look. Just one chapter in particular or the whole book. You can choose what kind. You can limit it to what kind of figure you want it to uh, look for, and uh, or you can choose all figures. Now, there should be figures here. There are no figures here. Why not? Well, there's a reason for that. You have to enable your figure to appear here. If you just bring in a photo or a video or what have you, it's not going to appear there automatically. So let's go to chapter one where I have this video. So why is this video not appearing in that list? Well, what you have to do is select your video, go to the inspector, and choose the widget inspector palette. And then right here it says label. You need to change it from none to something else. So in this case that's a movie, that's a video. So we're going to choose that and see it's added movie 1.1 and it'll number these automatically as you add more movies or as you add more diagrams or what have you. So now let's go back to the link inspector. Let's select this again because we want to make that a hyperlink. Click the, ooh, and there we go. So there is our, uh, our video and we've enabled it and we'll close that. And now if we click on it, it'll take us there. So that worked perfectly. Now we're going to do something somewhat similar for the text examples. It's a little bit more involved though because text obviously isn't going to all appear in that drop down menu automatically. We have to add bookmarks. So let's go through, let's say that what we want to link from is right around here in this chapter 2. So let's say we want rule 5 and rule 14 to link to rule 5 and rule 14. 
Well, we're on rule four right here. So if we go over here, here's rule five. And we'll select the whole line. And now we're going to open up the inspector palette. And we're in the link inspector. But this time, instead of being in the hyperlink inspector, we're going to click bookmark. And then you're going to click plus. And it basically just shows you that text. Now we're going to do the same thing in chapter three for this other rule that we want to make a link to, because we're going to make two links right now, one within that chapter and one outside the chapter, so you can see that it works both ways. Somehow we have missed rule 14. There is rule 14. So we'll select rule 14, hit plus. So obviously this is a, a lot handier to have these numbers than it would be otherwise, but the main thing is you got to select enough text that you'll know what it is when you see it later. Okay, so now we're going to go back to chapter 2. And where were we? There we go. Rule 5. So we're going to select this. We want to turn this into a link that goes somewhere else. So we go back to the link inspector. Choose hyperlink. Enable this hyperlink. Change the link to drop down to bookmark. And from the uh, name drop down, we choose five, do not join independent clauses, etc., 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 etc. Boom, done. Now we're going to go and do the same thing for, there it is, rule 14, enable as hyperlink, bookmark, change the drop down to 14. And we're done. So now, what happens if I click on that, and we see the hand, click on it, and it brings us right there and even highlights what, um, what the link is. And if we do the same for rule 14, it brings us there to another chapter, jumps us to another chapter, and shows us what we've highlighted. Now, one difference between this and how it actually appears in the iPad is that it won't highlight anything in the iPad. So you don't have to be self-conscious about what you select to make a bookmark. It can be one word, it can be a whole line, it can be a whole paragraph, it doesn't really matter. The, uh, the only thing that does matter is that you select enough text that you'll know later what it means. But you maybe don't want to select so much text that it gets you know, really hairy, like there's too much, there's too much in that drop down to see everything. So if we go if we go back here and we want to uh, sorry want to go there so in this drop down you can imagine if you've created dozens or maybe a hundred bookmarks the drop down is huge and you have to scroll up and down within the page and if you have so much text each one will only occupy the one line but it can begin to look pretty messy if you have a full line for each one on the other hand, the last thing you want is 15 entries that all say the or and. So you need to have enough text that you know what's going on, but maybe not so much that it makes it look visually uh, difficult to navigate. So that's basically how it works. And uh, that's an incredibly powerful feature. I use it quite frequently. It's great.